how strong was Prime Rayleigh actually? I've spent years wanting to know the answer, and so after spending the last few days researching every legendary feat, diving into SPS questions which give us clues straight from Oda, and rereading every chapter involving the Dark King, I can finally answer this question with confidence. We'll start out with Rayleigh's specialty, his incredible mastery of hockey, and towards the very end, we'll compare him to other legendary characters like Mihawk, his own Captain Roger, and many, many others. But before we dive in, make sure you leave us a like, because it really helps out the video. And if we get this video to an ambitious 5,000 likes, I'll let you guys pick the next character we do in this series through a poll. I know you guys want Roger, so I'll leave the rest to you. Ray Lee is what I call a complete hockey master. He's one of only a select few characters who have a complete mastery over all three colors of hockey. And we can acknowledge Ray Lee's genius in hockey because he's the man who trained Luffy during the time skip, transforming him from a fun, powerful wrecking ball of energy to a trained combatant with precision, control, and the best understanding of the three colors from the modern era. I would even go as far as saying that Luffy has now become the strongest hockey user in the current timeline of One Piece aside maybe Shanks. And I give a lot of this credit to the Dark King. I mean think about it, Luffy often thinks back to his master Rayleigh when attempting to learn a new technique. For example, during his battle with Katakuri, Luffy unlocks Future Sight by remembering Rayleigh's words about hockey blooming and how although he's trained him enough to understand hockey, Luffy could only reach his full potential through extreme life or death combat scenarios. And again in Wano when Luffy is master in Rio with Yogoro, Luffy remembers how Rayleigh was so proficient in this form all the way back in Sabaori. It's safe to say that Rayleigh is a master of Rio since he's not a devil fruit user. This means Rayleigh can attack without physically touching his hand or sword and instead use hockey as a energy blast. Some may argue similar to Zoro, Rayleigh would not be able to reach his full potential because Luffy and Roger are the captains. Therefore, they're not challenged or pushed as hard as these characters. Luffy and Roger have this main character energy to them and it's even stated that Roger would battle hordes of pirates and marines alone so his crew could make their escape. But luckily for Silver's Rayleigh, we actually know that in some instances, Rayleigh would be relied upon to show out against some of the most powerful marines and pirates when it was too much for Roger to handle alone. And this brings us to the God Valley incident. God Valley was likely the battle where Rayleigh's hockey began to bloom the most alongside Captain Goldie Roger. We don't know exactly how the Battle of God Valley went down, but we can assume that Rayleigh helped fight against the Ross Pirates since we know he was there with Roger when they got Shanks. Rox de Zabek was known as Roger's greatest enemy, so we can maybe assume that Roger fought Rox, at least for some period of time, or maybe Garb handled Rox while Roger battled his rival Whitebeard. Either way, this leaves Figaland and Rayleigh to some future Yonko level characters like Big Mom and Shiki. And let's not forget Kaido, Silver X, and Wang Zhi were also incredibly powerful at the time, so whether Rayleigh fought against Big Mom or Shiki or maybe even multiple big name pirates. It was a hard fought battle and I think when we see the God Valley incident, we'll see this was one of Rayleigh's biggest moments in his entire pirating career. I think it was the battle that pushed Rayleigh to the point of surpassing his limits, becoming the most powerful right hand man that any pirate could really ask for. And we can also know as the Roger pirates were the greatest crew of their time, that they would encounter some very difficult battles throughout the decades of time that they spent as a crew together. I like to think that Roger and Rayleigh were so powerful together that the Marines would send multiple of their top tier fighters to go after them, and that they would still escape alive and Rayleigh would be one of the first mates who can not only keep up but even win against an admiral. When it comes to Rayleigh's conquerors hockey, he's been shown to be a complete master as we discussed, and we know this because his very introduction of him is walking in the room and knocking out dozens of people in his presence with minimal ease, and this was so cool at the time. Because you have to remember at that time we'd only seen Shanks do something like this, so having an entrance like Shanks, I mean that puts the guy on a pedestal. And speaking of incredible entrances, Rayleigh's entrance at Amazon Lily was another amazing hockey entrance, showcasing he's a master of advanced applications of Conqueror's hockey, which allows him to coat his sword in all forms of physical attacks with the highest potential of hockey damage. And you can see this one Old Man Rayleigh in chapter 1059 is oozing with black lightning as soon as he enters stepping him to face Blackbeard. This isn't from a clash, it isn't from him going all out, it's simply a subtle warning to Blackbeard that he's gonna have to face the Dark King's wrath if he doesn't leave and free Boa Hancock. Now in all fairness, Rayleigh was bluffing here and he even admits in his age he probably couldn't defeat Blackbeard. But the fact that he pressed the living hell out of Blackbeard off of pure name value alone, off mere reputation and acknowledging his hockey presence made Blackbeard understand the severity of facing someone this dangerous. And it shows us a glimpse into Prime Rayleigh because that sliver of what Silver's Rayleigh once was is what sent a shiver down Blackbeard's spine. This moment implies that in his prime Rayleigh could defeat someone as powerful as a Yonko, considering even now this would still have been a high diff fight, even if old Rayleigh does lose. So at the very minimum, at least we have a bar, which is low Yonko level. And while you may think it's already incredibly impressive to put someone who's 
not even a pirate captain on par with a Yonko. Trust me when I say this is only the beginning. Also, I really like this moment because it shows an underrated aspect to Rayleigh, which is fearlessness. Even though he's humble, realistic, and aware that there's a great chance that he lose here, he isn't afraid to get down and dirty if necessary, which goes back to what I said about Rayleigh facing characters who are stronger than him. Continuing with Rayleigh's absurd hockey power, Oda once confirmed through an SPS that although Luffy is a prodigy with a very powerful will, he puts Rayleigh in high regards up there with hockey god Shanks above Luffy in terms of hockey. And in this SPS, Oda once stated that Rayleigh and Shanks could have both taken out at minimum double the Fishman that Luffy knocked out at Fishman Island. Now keep in mind this was Fishman Island Luffy and I'd say up to the point of Wano after Luffy masters Rio and unlocked Conker's hockey advanced forms, Oda Rayleigh's hockey was still league stronger. Even being mentioned in the same sentence as Shanks in regards to Conker's hockey already makes Rayleigh a nightmare for any marine. Now you may say there's no way that Rayleigh's hockey is close to Shanks and Oda's just gassing a Roger's right hand in. But let's also keep in mind that he wasn't talking about prime Rayleigh here and no he's not telling us that old Rayleigh is as strong as Shanks but just that he was at least twice as strong as Luffy's hockey during Luffy and Fishman Island. And moving into Arnhem and hockey we've seen Rayleigh being able to hurt Luffy with a single flick. Now Luffy didn't have any major damage but the anime does gas up Rayleigh even more and takes us to another level because during the Odin's flashback we actually get to see a glimpse of Rayleigh's peak strength. He doesn't go all out but he was still toying with Marco the Phoenix, Whitebeard's right hand man and a mythical Zoan Phoenix by stopping one of his attacks with a single finger. And I guess the question here is was it even canon? And to that I say that if you consider this your own head canon, fair enough because Oda did allow Toei to add some cool new scenes for the anime especially during Wano and it does feel like something that Rayleigh could do. It's safe to say that Rayleigh has some of the strongest arm in hockey as well as he's someone who has no devil fruit, someone who's a renowned and feared fighter and while he's an incredible conquer hockey user, there's still a bit of a tear gap here because someone like Roger is way ahead of him as someone who's compared to Luffy, the main character of the entire story who also is going to have the strongest conquerors hockey by the end of the series. But knowing that Rayleigh can use Ryo and other powerful ornament hockey techniques to fight against powerful devil fruit users, there's no doubt in my mind that he's lacking when it comes to ornament hockey. But when it comes to observation hockey, Rayleigh has also shown that he is very quick and perceptive at all times. He's shown it off a few times like when he faced Luffy by dodging an elephant with his eyes closed and let's not forget how quick he was when he first swooped in to fight against Kizaru. I think being able to keep up with someone as fast as light even at his old age proves that really has extreme levels of speed but also observation hockey because it's very very likely that Rayleigh also has future sight. And I think at least hockey wise you could argue that Rayleigh is only below a handful of the strongest characters ever like Roger, Whitebeard, and Gar. Alright so we've discussed his hockey prowess but what about his raw physical strength and combative abilities? But before we dive into that make sure that you subscribe if you're not already for future videos in this series where we break down how strong characters were in their primes and how strong our favorite One Piece characters were in general. We also have a bunch of big theories and analysis videos dropping in the next few months so hit that bell like Luffy and Skypea so you never miss an upload. Uh, so when it comes to physical strength it's safe to say that Rayleigh is just built different because he is a straight up superhuman monster like Zoro, Sanji, or Luffy. And just how we saw Zoro training by swimming through a cold water during Drum Island, Rayleigh is known for swimming through the Grand Line. And just off that we know he's completely insane but also physically a superhuman freak. I mean think about how far that midnight swim is from Saba Odi all the way to Amazon Lily. That means this guy is swimming, maintaining incredible amounts of physical stamina and fighting off who knows what kind of sea kings and other creatures on his way there. And then before ultimately defeating some right as he shows up to train Luffy. And to this day it's one of my favorite entrances in One Piece and really some of the coolest portrayal that we've seen especially for an old legend character like Rayleigh. I mentioned his observation hockey and that he probably does have future sight. But his raw speed and agility has to be addressed as well because he's only human, he doesn't have a devil fruit, and combining future sight with natural raw speed, it really is a crazy combo that we've seen many times in One Piece, Katakuri, Luffy, Kaido, and of course Shanks. But I do wonder how fast was Rayleigh during his prime? Well, I don't think that Rayleigh was the fastest character during his era, but he's definitely one of them. I'd give speed probably to guys like Garp and Roger, but I'd even put him over Whitebeard. Because while the Yonko like Whitebeard and Big Mom are surprisingly fast, Rayleigh seems to use this speed to attempt to close the gap in raw physical strength. While Rayleigh is extremely powerful through his raw power, there's definitely different levels to it as we've seen with characters like Big Mom and Garp. And so it may have actually been this incredible speed that put Rayleigh in that Yonko tier. And what's actually pretty interesting about Rayleigh's insane speed is when Rayleigh first showcases speed versus Kizaru, he uses a kick. Now this was interesting because while Zoro and Rayleigh do have many similarities, kicking in one piece is a 
fighting style that is associated to Sanji. And so I like to think that Rayleigh is kind of in a way a combination of both Zoro and Sanji when it comes to his fighting style. And I do think Zoro and Sanji could both eventually surpass Rayleigh, so don't twist what I'm saying here, but I just simply believe that Zoro is pretty much useless or at least severely nerfed without his swords. And same goes with Sanji because Sanji doesn't want to use punches or he doesn't want to fight with swords. But Rayleigh isn't limited to this kind of restriction, he's really just versatile with his fighting style. It seems while Rayleigh is definitely a swordsman with his preferred weapon being a sword, he's also a master martial artist without even using weapons. And this was also hinted at when Rayleigh trained Luffy because you think it'd be weird and not as effective for someone like Mihawk to train someone like Luffy. I mean when Luffy was using a sword in Wano, he was still punching with it. As we see Luffy come out the time skip a new man entirely, I believe this is also because he could relate to Rayleigh as a man with so many different tricks and different fighting styles, someone so creative. I mean Oda specifically introduced Rayleigh here to train Luffy. There really wouldn't be anyone better to do this. Someone who is not really limited to a true swordsman code like Mihawk or Zoro. Someone who is not a chef and only limited to fighting with his feet. It just makes Rayleigh more dangerous, more versatile, more complete, and a more adaptable fighter. It also means he has less weak points to exploit. For example, when Zoro fought King, he was risking everything to protect and save his swords. But Rayleigh wouldn't have this exact problem because he can still fight without them. It's ironic because Zoro's extreme dedication to his swords can potentially be a double-edged sword. Rayleigh's portrayal in One Piece is just also straight up ridiculous. I mean, Oda loves to gas him up and really only shanks in a few of the characters gets the love that this old man gets. Garp and the Marines respect the strongest man, Whitebeard, who has an entire fleet. And yet Rayleigh just alone gets similar respect with Garp saying, do you really want to take on two legends at the same time? Referencing Kizaru's actions at Sabaody. And this is kind of crazy because, you know, Rayleigh is a lone wolf, but no one even knew that Rayleigh was alive. I mean, no one knows what he's been up to, so I guess it is best to be cautious. I'm sure he has allies, but he is an underground king of sorts, hence the Dark King epithet. And speaking of the Dark King title, it also implies that even though Roger was the pirate king, Rayleigh was still in his own right, a king as well. Portrayal-wise, this comes in with parallels to Zoro, as Zoro is known as the King of Hell and Rayleigh is the Dark King. Rayleigh is the first mate to the pirate king, just like Zoro is the first mate to the future pirate king. Zoro is a cool badass with a sword, and same goes for Rayleigh. Rayleigh and Zoro both have scars on his eyes, and there's a lot of similarities between the two. But I have always wondered what Rayleigh's dreams and ambitions were, because this could actually give us a bigger look into his potential peak strength, especially if it does involve fighting and endless training like Zoro. I mean, I've even seen people call Rayleigh the previous world's strongest swordsman, and I think the idea falls a bit flat when we consider that Roger is definitely stronger and was in his crew. I mean, Roger had a sword that had ties to Ace as his primary weapon. In other words, Rayleigh could have become the strongest swordsman maybe if it wasn't for the one guy in his crew, his own captain. Still, this makes Rayleigh one of the greatest swordsmen ever, extremely proficient with the blade, even though if he's not truly dedicated to it like Zoro or Mihawk. But where this gets even more controversial is if we ask, would Prime Rayleigh be the world's strongest swordsman today? You know, this gets a bit crazy, this gets a bit toxic, but it's really interesting because for one, I do think Mihawk is a bit of a fraud, at least when it comes to his title. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Because I personally think if Shanks fought Mihawk right now, I think Shanks would win the battle and claim that title back, despite whatever happened in the years ago in their past rivalry. So as crazy as it sounds, I think Rayleigh is right around the Mihawk tier in strength, who I do have a bit below Shanks. I mean, when we talk about portrayal, Rayleigh has almost no negative aspects to his portrayal, where Oda sadly has made a joke of Mihawk and Marineford, letting me down as a true Mihawk fan. And yes, the One Piece world respects Mihawk, I just don't feel the same level of aura and respect for Mihawk as for Rayleigh, that every single time Rayleigh has been on screen, he just completely steals the show, and Oda does seem to have a bit of a boner for Rayleigh. And sure, Mihawk does have a bigger, cooler looking sword, but Rayleigh was fighting against future Yonkos not far from their primes in God Valley, and we know he played a significant part in this battle, also taking on Holy Knights. And just like Zoro will surpass Mihawk, he also has to surpass Prime Rayleigh. I could definitely see the arguments for Mihawk being a stronger character than Rayleigh 
really and i do think it's a very close call but yeah i do think that Rayleigh is definitely on mihawk's level and if i had to pick i'd have to pick Rayleigh. and just like zoro and Rayleigh share many similarities we also have mihawk and Rayleigh because Rayleigh ducked the marines for decades and survived on his own even after being hunted down as one of the most dangerous criminals in the world similarly mihawk is a lone wolf someone who doesn't have a crew and seems to value peace and still no one messes with them even if they are warlords even if they are on their own they both love to fight and they're both really calm and chill they're both cool collected swordsmen i'm not trying to downplay mihawk or shanks here the reason i bring all this up is just to show you how ridiculous Rayleigh was and how strong the roger pirates were by comparing him to someone that i know many people think is one of the strongest characters in the entire series like when i see garb warning the marines to not start any problems with Rayleigh, especially at the same time as whitebeard looking back on this he's categorizing Rayleigh as having so much potential raw power in his glory days since he's just one man compared to whitebeard's military power very similarly to how blackbeard backed off as well and both these two characters know exactly firsthand how strong Rayleigh is which makes them the most trustworthy characters because they've both seen them fight at some point it is just incredible to think that roger was running around with another yonko level character in his crew and this also makes me wonder that what if garb and Rayleigh fought in their primes would someone like garb straight up pummel Rayleigh? i mean based on the response from him the answer is absolutely not garb might overpower him and even win eight or nine out of ten times but the fact that Rayleigh even stands a chance against the greatest marine in history says everything about how monstrous prime Rayleigh truly was Rayleigh is portrayed to be extremely calm and a quick thinker a logical fighter who doesn't get angry or emotional and i imagine this translates very well to battle with Rayleigh in intense scenarios being the type to remain focused and calm at all times he's very mature he's very collected he's confident on top of that with hockey and a very quick response and reaction time Rayleigh is the real deal and so with all the facts portrayal feats and evidence i've come to a few conclusions Rayleigh is stronger than damn near every marine in one piece history Rayleigh is definitely in the yonko tier i'd like to say that he's right alongside monsters like prime big mom and mihawk you know i used to be a huge believer in prime big mom who even the roger pirates were hesitant to fight in their own territory and i think if it really came down to it Rayleigh has a 50 50 shot of defeating big mom when it comes to portrayal as a roger pirate i've heard some arguments that odin was actually the second strongest roger pirate after roger by the time the crew disbanded simply off the fact that odin was ready to go up against kaido and i think odin is a matter of a missed potential because while yes it was stated that odin evolved so much stronger from his adventures with roger and whitebeard i believe that odin never actually reached his peak prime potential i mean he never even got his full fight against kaido which would have put him to his limits both kaido and odin would have become so much stronger from this fight and who knows maybe odin would have gotten even stronger after that so while i do think that odin had the potential to become stronger and surpass Rayleigh one day i do think he fell a bit short of this as he spent many of his prime years twerking in the streets while Rayleigh spent decades sailing and fighting with roger now in these types of videos i like to ask who does prime Rayleigh one shot if prime Rayleigh existed in the current era of one piece i think he'd be so strong that he could one shot characters like boa hancock or even joe flamingo he'd just be too quick too powerful to deal with for characters around this level and so if there's anything that we've learned from this video make sure to respect Rayleigh. if you enjoyed this video or anything i said in it make sure to leave a like to get us to our goal of 5,000 likes and check out this playlist right here where we break down how strong gear 5 luffy really is as well as other legends in their prime like garp and whitebeard